Good morning. Hi, girls. Hi. Hi. No babies yet? No. Did you get a storm last night? Is everything okay? This is the first time driving up that they were all here to greet us. Good morning. Right there, Clark. Hold it. Good job. Good job, 92. Yeah. See, you were nice. We want to give you cubes. No, you're 92. Too nice. There you go. Good girl. Here's another one. Yeah, I got more. Come on. There you go. Good girl. Welcome back to Black Acre Ranch, everyone. So, if you remember from our last episode, we started trying to use a small pasture for the cubes, and all the cubes were put on the ground, and I think we were wasting a bunch. So, with Steve's help and getting some extra bowls, we're going to try putting them in these rubber made plastic bowls. You can see last week it looks like either that's a bunch of poo or that was a cube. Maybe it was a cube that came out. <laughs> so we spread these out and now it's just a matter of filling them up and then seeing how the buffalo do. We got one, two, three, four, seven, eight, nine, ten, ten to twelve. We had a couple little ones. So yeah, we'll see how this goes. Hopefully they don't waste as much. I guess that's all of them. We only put out a bag and a half right now, so we have a little bit left. And once they start doing these, we'll start throwing some out to others that aren't getting it, but we only got like 10, and some of them are pretty close. So let's let them in. Okay, so it's almost looking like there's one, maybe two per, and that's not enough. So it doesn't look like they're sharing the key, the tubs very well. Um, like this chick over here is just totally like, that's hers and nobody else's. So we're gonna have to get a, a lot more tubs, <laughs> maybe. And then uh, we're trying to hand feed a little bit from the truck here as they walk around to try and get some distribution.
Okay, okay. Done. She won't go away. And if you come up, you get more. Girlfriend, you're getting a lot of that. <laughs> so do one thirty eight. Good grief, girlfriend. You are coming up. Hey, Daddy. All right, we've officially distributed all the cubes, yeah. except the little bit that Mari's got. <laughs> Bowls work pretty good, but it's so confined that I think one bowl or one cow gets the entire container. So, I don't know, we're still thinking about this, how we might do it. So we started putting some also on the ground and I think that helped others get some. Um, Anyway, I kind of wanted to bring up, if you're new to the channel and you're just kind of here, some of the past videos I've been mentioning that, hey, these are Steve's or these are Brent's and so forth. We got 22 or 24 cows from a, a guy named Brent and we got eight, which is six cows and two bulls, Ahmed and Bartok, from Steve. So anything with a yellow tag is Brent's or origin, or there's two with a green tag. Those also came from Brent. Everything that's white came from Steve. So I've been referring to them as Steve's and Brent's, but you know, a guy mentioned in the comments, hey, who's, who's Steve and who's Brent's? Do you own these things? So I've got to come up with a different name and he's right. So these are our, these are our herd of animals. Just checking around me. So these are ours. It's not Steve's or Brent's, we do own them. Um, I'm just going to call them white tags and yellow tags. Maybe that's how I'm going to distinguish them um, going forward. So until this coming year when we re-tag them all, and it'll probably be white. So until then we'll go yellow herd and white herd. But if you're wondering why I keep referring to Steve and Brent, that's why. We're going we're gonna to leave these guys here and let them finish it up while we get to work doing other things like fencing. Um, we do have 17 confirmed pregnant and there's four that are unknown. So we're waiting for babies to drop anytime now. Um, every time we come up here, I'm hoping to see it. Um, every time Steve comes out and checks on them, I'm hoping he tells me there's a baby, but we should have hopefully at least 17 babies. Um, and we'll bring you of course, all the pictures and all the good news once they come. But yeah, let's wrap this up here and we're gonna start fencing and let them finish this off so uh, we're gonna bug out. These three wires come from the box. The second. The second box. All right. Three little wires that go down. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah, from the box. Yeah. The small end tube has wires going down it. I wanted to see if there were any of these. Can somebody wiggle them? Um, that's the AC. That's the AC. One that's one. these right here. Which yeah. go to this. I'm moving those wires? Yep. Oh, well, there's three more. Oddly enough. Goes inside there. Well, there's a hole and it's moving inside the hole. Okay, so does the hole go in there? Yep. All right, so that is not it. Since we've been here and had the property, we've had ultimately the worst time with utilities. Um, it took six months just for them to turn the electric on, and that meant just flick the switch to turn it on. Um, the electric company wouldn't accept the fact that they had the property, despite us having the EID number, the property address and everything, they said they didn't have it. It wasn't theirs. That took two or three months to rectify. And then they said, well, there might be a short, so we're gonna have to fix it. The pole, which is on the property line, about a thousand feet that way. And that took four months for them to go ahead and do because they just couldn't get around to doing it. So it took September when we finally had power. 
So the big building here next to me has power and everything is brought into this spot where we have these boxes. Each box has 600 amps, it's three phase. Um, so we have 2,400 total amps. These first two boxes, they all have hot wires into the top, but these all have wires coming up the bottom. And these guys all go into this building here, the big sanctuary barn thing, okay? The problem I'm having is, is I don't have electric at the pavilion or at the small house. And I've been trying to find where all of that power is coming from. So I had an electrician come out and I asked him, you know, to sort out this mess, what do I have? What would it cost? All the stuff, I wanna make sure I had power in here, at the pavilion, at the small house give me a quote and all he would say is well you know just run me all brand new lines that's it he wants conduit run two feet underground so i don't like that the house and the pavilion all have wires in a box a circuit breaker box all wires plugged right up into it i just don't know where the other end is so we've been investigating today and it looks like this box goes to the pavilion so that's routed we can turn it on, we get power at the pavilion. We still cannot find out what powers the house or the garage. No clue. You know, I mean, there's only so many boxes. Everything was turned on and we still can't find it. So that's more investigation in the future. I don't know if anybody knows of a decent electrician and wants to give me some assistance and I pay them, I just can't seem to find anybody who does that. So we're still on the hunt for the house, but. It looks like we have stuff at the pavilion. Now we just gotta figure out what is at the pavilion. And ultimately I need something to go to the well. And I'm hoping that's through the pavilion. Cause then if we can get the well guy out to fish out the pump and get everything sorted, then I know I can turn it on and start providing water. That's my main goal, but I need to get power. And that's been the problem. We've got this little creek coming down through seven on our west border. So we're gonna drive over it, and we have a big log across the road up here behind us. So we'll go check out getting rid of that log today. So we can finish getting some of the um, age braces set. There's the big tree. There's Jeff at the little creek. It's like timber again. And Jeff's dad working on getting the chainsaw going. The log has been taken down. Now it's Jeff's turn to traverse the hill.
helpful and got the truck to come join us on our path to finish this fence line. Um, yeah, I'm stuck. So uh, here's my Calvary. Let's see. Let's see if he can fix my problem because I got it pretty stuck. You can back up, guys. We have another green. Yes. Do you want it? I think it's up at the pavilion. All right. So we have a second line. This is all to keep the tractor from coming down the hill. So that's good. And yeah, awesome. Mm -hmm. Thank you for your help, handsome tractor man. Mm -hmm. You did a good job. Just because of my big green thing, huh? That's right. I like you for your tractor. Mm -hmm. Here's your all truck. mud. Let's see how far down she was. I don't think she was that far in. Yeah, it's not even on the brakes. So, yeah, lots of mulch, lots of mud. Yeah. It was a bad place. So we got her out. Anyway, went better than I thought it would go. So now we're not gonna go back that direction. We'll go back around the backside of the pasture. Let's get more posts. So Charlotte and Dad went back, set that corner post, and we're now dragging the line across the water up here, and we're gonna put it on the post that we just set. Then that way we can get the brace posts off of it. How's your boots? Um, are you talking to me? Mm -hmm. I'd like some new ones. Oh, well, we got these three posts done. Let me give you a summary of where we're at now. So these are in some seriously nasty clay. And... Right there's a little ridge and it drops down to where Charlotte was stuck. And you can see the other side up there. Right now Charlotte and my dad are walking southward and I think that area right there is the end of the property line. So the goal right now is to actually just take one barbed wire line along the bottom of these T-posts and go all the way down to the corner and then just tie it off. From that line, we can then get all the other posts set, which won't be too much. I just put in double H braces here, so that should be able to span me about 750 feet, um, 500 feet. I think I've only got like 400 and 500 feet left to go here. So we're going to span that all the way down to the other side. Next week, because the barbed wire is here, we're going to start putting a bunch of T posts in and getting all of those going, and at the same time doing all these H braces and the wires and so forth. So these are where we're at. Just to give you some perspective, the truck's here, and this is the mulched area where the mulcher had stopped this last, ah, oh gosh, I don't know when it was, May or so forth. So this starts clearing out all the way around. And this is what it looks like down below. Way up top is the top of seven, way up top there. So what our plans are, we plan on making some sort of a, a pig pasture to raise the pigs out on the wooded lots. Actually, let me turn around. To potentially raise pigs out up in here in the wooded area where it's just not super grazable. I can't mow, I can't get up this hill, uh, things of that nature. So it's not really good for the buffalo for pasturable spot, it's just wooded. So I would like to put pigs up here along the bottom of the ridge until we get to about here, which will line up with 
the T post or those H braces we just put in and run a barbed wire right up there. So that way the buffalo would have all of this section down here and then all the pigs would be up in here and I would access them down through this trail over here. So those are the plans um, to try and get most use out of the land as we can since I can't really pasture all of the wooded area. So right now we're getting that line way down yonder and they're going to wrap it on the corner post that's down there and then I think we're going to call it good for fencing today. So we appreciate you joining. Keep up with us next week. Um, we'll get all these teep posts in, hopefully finish up a bunch more. Not sure how many helpers we're going to have here, um, but we'll keep making progress. My goal hopefully once we finish this spot in the next week or so is to then do the southern line and that is already fenced but it's only five a five strand so we're going to put some extra couple strands on top so hopefully that only takes a couple more weeks after that so i'm thinking like a month maybe the beginning to mid of may and have the buffalo into seven as well all right thanks for joining click like and subscribe we'd really appreciate it and uh catch you next week see ya with you i want to stay with you